Hello. Today we are going to be doing something that I had, I don't know, I had this idea to do and I think it might work. I think it might be nice and I think it might be fun. I don't know. We're testing it out. We're going to see. But basically I'm, I'm working on another video, but it's a little more labor intensive. So I need a little more time to do it. But this video, I think what I want to do is I'm going to continue working on my puppets image that I did from the live stream. But one of the things I often hear from people are like, how do you get over artist block? Or how do you even like create a character? Or, you know, I haven't drawn for fun in a long time, especially if these people are part of the art industry. Like <laughs> when art becomes your job, it's very easy to kind of lose the fun in it. And it also just kind of becomes work. And so I wanted to make this video to kind of maybe help with all of those things and maybe it'll help you. I don't know, but this is Gus. This, this is Gus. This is, this is Gus. This is going to be like a guided draw with me video where I will be drawing my thing, but I'll also provide prompts and questions and maybe just some things that can help get your brain going and hopefully you can draw along with me while I do this. Kind of treat this video as an exercise, as a way to maybe either practice creating characters or getting out of an artist block or maybe trying to find fun in drawing again. I think that drawing for yourself and drawing for fun is so important. And in this day and age, it's so easy to kind of turn all of your interests and hobbies into something that makes you money. I say as somebody who has done exactly this with art and making money. <laughs> so <laughs> this is something that I have personally dealt with. I experience artist blocks. I have a hard time sometimes coming up with characters. And for a long time, I didn't find any joy in drawing. So I'm hoping that maybe this video can be kind of like a draw with me. So just practice drawing with me. You don't have to be good. You don't have to post it when you're done. You can if you want to, but um, just treat this as something fun, as a fun exercise. And yeah, we're just gonna try to get those juices going. If you have ADHD like I do, <laughs> Sometimes it helps me to have kind of a body double. And if you don't know what that is, body doubling is when someone is with you working on something and that kind of motivates you to start working on it as well. So I'm also hoping maybe this video can do that. Maybe having me work on this and body doubling and asking you questions and trying to get your brain kind of thinking in a different way. Maybe that'll also help you. So just something fun. We're going to try. I, if this video flops then it flops, if it goes off and you guys really, really liked it, then maybe we can do more of these in the future. But yeah, we're just going to have fun today. I'm going to work on my puppets video or my, pup, I'm going to work. Habla babada abada do. I'm going to work on my puppets drawing. I think we're going to create a character today maybe, but also if you don't want to create a character, that's fine. If you have an idea that you've been wanting to work on for a while and just haven't found the time, maybe now's the time to try it. If there's something that you want to explore, something new, maybe now's the time to try it as well. So you don't have to do a character. I'm just providing these prompts in case you are in an art block or in case you want to practice character design. Come with me. We're going to do this. It's going to be a nice kind of relaxing, chill video. It is going to be a little long but that's kind of on purpose just so that, you know, we have time to draw and time to think and time to ponder. Get yourself a drink, get yourself some snacks, get yourself the art products you need, a sketchbook, pencil, iPad, a napkin and ketchup, anything that can make a mark, grab it, let's go. Or if you want to paint or if you want to knit, whatever it is, but we're going to use this as kind of a fun crafting, drawing, art time, like I've said, like 50 times. And yeah. All right. Let's do it. So before anything, I start off by turning on some music or turning on a YouTube 
channel or something, I need some sort of background noise. So, so I think in the honor of the puppets, <laughs> we are going to make a anthropomorphic character. Some might call him a furry, some might call him anthropomorphic, whatever you feel comfortable with. Since the puppets are dog girls, let's make some characters. You can either do a dog character, a cat character, any animal that you like. Either pick an animal that you like, or maybe pick a dog breed you like if you want to make a character in the puppets world. Go for it. The puppets world only consists of dogs and cats, FYI. So pick a dog breed or a cat breed that you like. Let's start drawing. One of the first things that I do is ask myself these questions. So I'm gonna ask you these questions. What type of personality do you want to illustrate? Is your character fun? Are they bubbly? Are they adventurous? Are they shy? Are they serious? Are they somebody quick to anger? All of these are important to ask because they help influence your character design. So I will ask you, what type of character do you wanna to make today? Do you want your character to be shy, sweet, tough? Pick a personality trait that you really like and start kind of mulling over how you feel like that character would be represented through their posture, their clothes, their hairstyle. All of these play into a successful design. So feel free to pause this at any time to do research, but pick a breed of dog or cat or another animal if you'd like, and then think about their attitude and what type of posture they might have. If they're mean, are they always gonna be standing in a very confident way with their hands on their hips, chest out, and looking down at you, kind of intimidating? Or maybe they are coy and gentle and maybe they don't talk a lot. Maybe they just like to read. And so maybe they are going to stand there and look kind of shy. They're gonna, you know, be fiddling with their fingers, have their knees turned in. Maybe their eyebrows kind of furrowed. Uh, maybe the character's really peppy and excitable. What are they doing? Are they jumping up? Are they smiling really wide? Are they exclaiming something? Are their hands above their heads? What is this character doing and why are they doing it? These are good questions to ask. Once you feel like you might have a personality down, even if it's a slight one, let's just explore some outfits. Is your character peppy, but they dress in an emo fashion? You can have these juxtapositions and sometimes it makes the design more interesting. If they dress in all black and dress in a kind of goth outfit, but they act really joyful, how do they express that? How does their posture influence their design? How does a character that looks like it should be depressed based off of what people think they should be like versus how they actually are, how does that influence them? Or maybe they dress in Renaissance outfits. Do some research. I like to go on Pinterest. You can pause this and research if you want. Find some outfits and start exploring. Draw your character in a bunch of different poses, um, even if it's just very loose sketching and try out some different outfits. How do you feel like those outfits would work for that character? Try to imagine that character talking to you. Imagine what they would say when you pick out these outfits. For example, I always feel this very strongly with Scotty, who's the Scottish Terrier. Whenever I put Scotty into something that is very hyper femme, since she has more androgynous masculine outfits, I often feel like she's in my head kind of being like, really? And this kind of plays into her character a little bit and plays into the story, but but this is just kind of another thing to add. Like, how does your character feel about the outfits that you're picking? I saw a Glenn Keane talk when I was in school, and Glenn Keane is a famous character designer and illustrator at Disney. And he said something that has always stuck with me in regards to character design. When you're designing a character, the character exists in a way. And your job as a character designer is just to remove the fog of what that character looks like. The character exists in a different kind of realm almost. And you just have to keep working it and working it until that character fully reveals itself. And I really feel this strongly. I think that when you're designing a character, the character kind of already exists in some sort of realm in your imagination and your job is just to push back all of the mist and the fog that clouds the design and bring it to the forefront. 
Now, there are actual rules when it comes down to character design and making a successful character design, but we're not going to bother ourselves too much with the strict rules today since this is more about just having fun and trying to enjoy what we're doing and breaking artist block and just getting into it and kind of going back to how we used to draw as children. And as a kid, when you were drawing, at least for me, I didn't really follow very structured rules. I was just kind of drawing what I liked and drawing what entertained me. And I want that to be what we're doing today. So in your character, let's pick, like I said, some outfits that you might like. Um, let's pick some hairstyles. What type of hair would your character wear? Do they have short hair? Do they have long hair? If they're a dog, are their ears hidden under the hair or do they stick out of the hairstyles? Do they incorporate their ears into the hairstyle at all? Does their tail have a lot of fur on it? Do they do anything with that fur? Do they decorate it? Do they dye it? Do they put clips in it? If they're a cat, maybe do they curl their whiskers? Do they do anything interesting with their whiskers or maybe do they paint their nails? If your character is set in a specific era or decade, make sure you do research into what people actually wore during that time and don't go off of what you just think they wore from memory because a lot of the times our memory isn't super reliable and we get certain things wrong. So in order for it to look really good and look accurate, it's best to work off of what people actually wore. Or maybe your character is fantasy or sci-fi. And in that way, you kind of can do whatever. Just look at reference and inspiration. Maybe what is it like to be a dog in space? <laughs> what type of protective gear would they need to wear? How do they move around in the space station? These are all questions you want to ask yourself, not just what your character looks like, but how do they feel about what they're wearing? Why would they pick the clothes that they do? Why would they style the hair that they have? Can they do the things that they want to do in their outfits? For example, you wouldn't put a character who is a really fast runner and loves to run and sprint in something giant and bulky in something that they could trip over easily. They would probably lean more towards something that was a little more fitted, something that allowed them a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom in their legs so that they could run. So just think about more than just, I want my character to have pink hair, but think about why they might want pink hair, how this pink hair might explain what their personality is kind of like. Just small details like that. Think a little more in depth of why they do and wear and say that and act the way that they do. And I've personally found that when I start asking myself these questions, it starts kind of getting my brain running and then it's easier for me to start picturing things or start imagining maybe how this character acts or does the things that they do, which also in turn helps me design characters or also helps me kind of get over an artist block. If you didn't want to draw a character, another way that you could get over an artist block is to just pull in as much inspiration as you can. I feel like artist blocks are kind of like your well is empty and in order to fill it up again, we need to put water back in. And the only way to put water back in is to just drink inspiration. So scroll through Pinterest or go outside and do something else. Um, don't just sit inside. Maybe, maybe your brain needs a break and you need to like experience life outside or with friends or with family a little bit and sometimes it's like the smallest thing that a friend can say or family member can say that can trigger a thought that in turn starts making you think about design and art and everything and then you go back home and want to draw so i've always found that when i'm feeling like i have an artist block it's either i am exhausted and i need time to wind down and take a break and do something else or I am on empty with inspiration and I need to fill back up quote unquote my proverbial creative well and therefore I need to watch movies that I find really beautiful or inspirational or I need to look at images that I really like I'll just look up things that I like 
dogs, fashion, whatever it is, just scroll through until you see something that you like. Click that thing. See what the related images are. Click another thing that interests you. Go down a rabbit hole. Let yourself go down a rabbit hole and let yourself get interested and inspired. Let's get back to our fun character design. Often artists, we do this all the time, we default to either a similar face or a similar body, something that we are comfortable drawing. And it's also something that our hands know how to draw because a lot of drawing is just a lot of muscle memory. So if you draw one type of face or one type of body over and over again, your hand is going to get used to drawing it and then it's gonna be harder to break out of. So sometimes what I like to do, along with asking all of these questions is, mm, what's a maybe body type that I haven't drawn a lot? Or what's a face type that I haven't drawn a lot? Maybe if you draw only slender characters, what would it look like if your character was chubby? Chubby comes in a variety of shapes. People hold their weight in a lot of different spots. So maybe your character is pear-shaped, for example. Maybe they hold most of their weight in their hips and their legs. Or maybe they're apple-shaped. They hold a lot of their weight in their stomach and their legs are kind of thinner. Maybe they are hourglass shaped, so they have like an even distribution with a smaller waist, wider hips. Maybe they have no curves. They're way more straight. If you have like a masculine character. Are they really strong? Do they have a lot of muscles or are they lean and lanky? Do they not have any muscles at all? Are they tall? Are they short? Do they also hold weight in their stomach or maybe they hold weight in their legs? Explore just different ways and shapes. A lot of character design is just exaggerating shapes. One of the big rules with character design that I said that we wouldn't talk about, but I'll mention it briefly because it can kind of help is the shape language of your design. So a lot of the times, if your character is soft and friendly, maybe you want more rounded curves or softer, round, smooth shapes. Maybe your character is really abrasive. So maybe their shapes and the shape language, they're kind of sharper, pointier. Maybe they have broader shoulders that come to a point. Maybe their knees come to a point more. These little details can kind of help guide you and inspire you and also make your character look a little more interesting. Obviously you can go super exaggerated with it or you can go more realistic, but this is mostly just about having fun. So just explore, draw and doodle. <laughs> just doodle. Maybe you don't like your first iteration. That's fine. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like the second one. You don't have to like the third one. You don't have to like the 50th one. It doesn't matter. We're just doing this for fun. Just draw your character over and over again. Maybe you think you want to draw this one character, but now that you're working on it, you have another idea. That's fine. Scrap the first one. Start on another one. No rules. <laughs> it's just having fun. Try to tap into maybe how you feel today. How are you feeling today? Are you sad? Are you worried? Are you scared? Are you happy? Are you excited? Maybe you use these emotions to create a character or you can use these emotions to just draw. Sometimes I find when I'm feeling super overwhelmed, just drawing my feelings, putting how I feel on paper helps me a lot. So if you're feeling worried, maybe as simple as it is, draw a worried character. Or maybe if you need comfort, maybe draw a character getting a hug. Or if you are feeling angry, just take paint in reds and oranges and yellows and scribble down on the paper. No rules, just fun and just expression. Another thing that we can explore as well is different styles or working in a variety of styles. I think as artists, especially with social media and all of this type of stuff, we can get too hyper-focused on the concept of your own style, quote unquote, because we often see really successful artists getting far and wide with their own look. And often we think, oh man, if I could just nail down my own style, then everything will be peachy keen. But 
the issue with this is style is a very fluid concept. It's ever evolving, it's ever changing, and often an artist's style in the beginning might continually and gradually shift into something else later down the line. And I think a really good thing is to practice different styles in general because sometimes you find that working in a different style, quote unquote, is actually more conducive to how you like to draw. So what I like to do, because I get asked this a lot too, is how do you draw in so many different styles, is you really practice and focus on maybe a style that you really admire and you want to kind of replicate. You do these things called master copies, where you basically look at the artist that you really enjoy, like their work, and you copy it. Not tracing, but just copy it and like really study and see how the artist drew their lines or how they colored or painted or anything like that. You really, really study every single stroke that they make. And you do a lot of practices, a lot of master copies. Master copies aren't really necessarily like your quote unquote own work. In a way, it's like you are practicing. And then once you do these master copies, you kind of get the hang of how another artist works. And then you can incorporate some of those things into your own style. Now, I'm not saying that you replicate somebody's style completely. I'm saying you take bits and pieces here and there from many, many artists that you like um, to build your own look. And then the longer that you draw in that, the more your hand and the more you draw kind of naturally influences how the style changes over time. And you eventually drop certain details or pick up other details that you didn't in the first place, which then kind of creates your own look. Again, this can change many times. You can become inspired by other artists and completely shift into a different style. Even if you look back on my own work, you can see points where my personal style kind of shifted after getting inspired by something and really realizing that, oh, I like how they do this and I wanna incorporate something similar into my work. So don't be afraid and also don't try to lock yourself in to any sort of specific style. And then once you start working in it, go, well, I can't explore anything else because this is my style. No, a lot of artists will explore other things because it's fun. So just allow yourself the freedom to explore and enjoy and create. If there's something that you love and you think this artist did a wonderful job doing it and you would love to do something like that, try it out and see how you feel. I think a lot about how social media has really shaped in a positive and negative way the art world and a lot of the times I hear this from my peers, fellow artists who are in the animation industry or in the gaming industry or whatever industry art industry it is that they get home and they just don't want to draw, that they're tired of drawing, that they're so burnt out and they yearn for when drawing was fun. And I've gotten asked about it so many times. And I think for me personally, maybe this isn't applicable to you, but it is for me. One of my issues, because I dealt with this too, is that I got really fixated on what other people expected of me in regards to my work. And I really just wanted to draw <laughs> cute girls and fashion and dogs. <laughs> That's it, and those are the things that I like. And I found that in the beginning when I really restricted myself and said, oh, well, my, my art needs to be digestible to the biggest amount of people as possible because that's the only way that I'll ever succeed. It ended up kind of restricting me when I was like, I can't do a lot of pink because that will push away you know, the general male audience, or I have to be more approachable to men and men's interests because I need to tap the largest market as possible. That's when your work kind of, I feel like people notice that your heart isn't fully in it or it's lacking something. And I've always found that people tend to gravitate towards artists who are really passionate and genuinely enjoy what they're doing. So, I think we're often taught that, especially with social media, we have to be producing 
something that can be digestible by everybody all the time, all at once. And I think that that's a big flaw. And I think that artists are often very niche people or we're people who like to jump around and explore various things. And sometimes if we get really set in something, it's like a very specific thing. <laughs> and I personally feel like, and I've noticed this in my own interactions on people who follow me versus also the people I choose to follow and I choose to interact with. I'm drawn towards the people who really enjoy doing the thing that they do. <laughs> Meaning if they like drawing cute little squishy animals and that's all they draw for fun, then that's awesome and I enjoy it and I'm gonna follow them and enjoy their work. And if I like drawing cute girls in fashionable outfits and cute dogs, I'm gonna draw those things. And I've found that my growth, even though I don't think it's super important, although this is a completely different topic, my growth has changed because of this, because people like seeing artists enjoy the work that they're doing. So all of that to say is, if you feel stuck, if you feel like you have a big artist block, or you can't design things, or you're really burnt out, maybe, and I'm not saying that this is the case for everybody, but you can ask yourself, am I drawing for me? Or am I drawing for what people expect of me? Am I drawing for a possible job that someone might notice me and hire me and therefore I must cater all of my style and my look and everything towards that specific company, which you can do, but I feel like people can get more burnt out when that happens as opposed to just drawing what they enjoy. I often get asked how I ended up working for Mattel and Spin Master. And I think people want some sort of step-by-step -step answer. And I tell people all the time, I have no good answer. They reached out to me because they saw my work and they liked it and that's it. So I feel like as long as you draw what you like, whatever it is, it can be the most obscure thing. You might have a smaller amount of people quote unquote following you, but the people who will follow you genuinely enjoy the things that you're making, which then also in turn fuels you and wants you to keep making things that you like as well. Don't get so fixated on follower count and reach and stuff and trying to produce something that will get the biggest audience or the biggest target, especially if you are not <laughs> a content creator. Content creation is slightly different. That's a whole other topic, but just draw what you like. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of us forget to do, especially because we're so trained to produce, 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 and produce things for everybody and produce things quickly and produce things cheaply so that it can be consumed by anybody and everybody at any point in time. And art doesn't work that way. <laughs> art is a almost like a compulsion. It, it lives inside of you and it's a, it's a need to create and how that need comes out can vary in material, in production, in time spent on it, all of this type of stuff varies. And when it comes down to it, you're drawing because you enjoy it and you had an interest in it in the first place and you loved it in, a fir in the first place. As a child or as a teen or whenever you started drawing, you got into it because you enjoyed it. And so it breaks my heart when I hear people say that they don't enjoy it anymore because I'm like, this, this is the thing that should fuel you because you love it so much. So just draw what you like, draw the things that interest you, draw how you feel, draw clothes that you think are cool or draw, um, I always come back to fashion because that's a big inspiration for me, but it might not be an inspiration for you. And that's totally fine. Whatever your inspiration is, whatever the things that you like to enjoy, maybe draw it and, and see how you feel. Try to just focus on drawing things that you like personally, that you wanna draw and don't worry about anybody else. Anyway, how is your character design coming? It's okay if you haven't gotten a lot of progress 
or maybe you have a ton of progress. Either way, it's great, as long as we're kind of getting our brains warmed up and our brains moving. Maybe even just doodling, without even thinking, really, a various characters, various shapes, various designs. Another tip that we can do is silhouettes, where you're basically just drawing what the character would look like if you just saw their silhouette, all black. And instead of focusing on all of these little details, sometimes it might help to remove all the details completely <laughs> and just draw big black bold shapes in the form of a humanoid being. And maybe after doing a ton of these iterations, maybe one of them speaks to you, maybe two of them speaks to you, whatever it is. Maybe you really like the design of some of them. Just take a big fat marker and start drawing shapes. Maybe you made a character with short legs. Well, maybe this silhouette next, you draw really long legs. Or maybe the silhouette you drew previously had a very straight body. Well, maybe this one, you draw a very curvy body. Or if you have a very specific attitude in mind, maybe the silhouette influences that by, for example, if your character is very tough and strong, Maybe he looks like a big old brick, like he has a big square body. Or maybe she has really thick arms because she's really super strong and she can lift anything. So make her arms really buff. Maybe give her big hands. Or maybe your character is goofy and silly and wacky and clumsy. Maybe make their feet really big, something that they can trip over a lot or maybe make their limbs really long and their torso super short, or vice versa, make their torso really long and their limbs really short. Just explore with just a silhouette. That can help a lot of people sometimes. For me personally, I get kind of lost in it. It's not something that I like to do. I feel like often my first silhouette that I draw ends up being the one that I pick because I kind of have an idea of the character in my brain in general. But for other people, this can be really beneficial and this is a good practice. I think also if you are feeling really stuck, just doing warm ups can help as well. So drawing and doodling poses or maybe just drawing faces, drawing facial expressions. What does your character look like when they're laughing? What does your character look like when they're crying? People have different ways of expressing that. Does your character cry a lot? When that character cries, are tears streaming down their face? Are their eyebrows furrowed? Is their mouth open wide? Are they just sobbing? Or are they a character who doesn't like to cry and doesn't want people to know that they cry? So they look kind of tougher. Maybe they have a little bit of tears in their eyes, but they're not gonna be bawling, for example. Or maybe you have a character who loves to laugh, but they don't like their teeth. So they cover their mouth all the time when they laugh. Or maybe you have a character that gets angry really easily, but instead of exploding on people, they kind of fume. So what does that look like? What does their face look like when they're fuming? How does that look different than just someone yelling, right? So these are other things that we can explore with our character designs. If you have a idea in mind, you can just draw heads, just a ton of heads in your sketchbook or on a loose piece of paper, just a ton of heads, ton of different expressions from different angles, three quarters, profile, up, down, whatever. How does your character look when they're happy? How does your character look when they're sad? What do they look like when they're mad? when they're frustrated, when they're thinking, when they're confused. This can also help flesh out your character and flesh out their personality and helps you reveal who they were supposed to be. Phew, so that's a lot of information <laughs> that we worked through today. I hope that this was helpful to you and beneficial. Let's look at the final reveal of this puppets sheet. I don't know exactly what I'm calling this. I don't know if they're gonna be stickers or what, but I wanted to make some Easter themed 
girls and an Easter themed outfit because they didn't have one yet. And I'm striving to create costumes for like every holiday and every season for them, just for fun. But yeah, anyway, let's check out the reveal. I hope that this video was fun or helpful or interesting or anything. I hope it helped with artist block or I hope it helped you come up with some interesting characters. Feel free to share them if you want. Tag me so I can see. You don't have to. If you want to treat this purely as an exercise, that's okay too. And let me know if you enjoyed this type of video and if you want to see more. If you like these kind of draw along with me videos. All right, see you later. Goodbye.